As you can see, it's morning rush hour in Barcelona and we're on a gaggle of brand new NMAX 125s. This is the standard version rather than the uh, Tech Max version, which they've done for the first time this year on this model. If you're an NMAX user already, you'll probably spot a few uh, aesthetic differences. It's certainly been sharpened up quite a lot this year. Well, now joined Yamaha's sports sector rather than being on their move sector. So they've sported it up a bit uh, to give it that proper X family feel. And although it's not making any more power than it did last year or torque, the new Euro 5 version of this engine has had quite a few uh, significant updates. Like a new cylinder, uh, cams have been swapped about a bit. I'll give you the full spec in the uh, write up. Um, and I mean, we just got on these literally straight onto the motorway, and it does really well. Really impressed. It's a liquid cooled blue core motor, of course, and whatever they've done to it, very good. Yeah, doesn't, doesn't feel like a slow 125 at all. Have a bit of fun, that's for sure. So I'm going to give this um, a good test today. Incidentally, I saw 108 kilometres an hour on the speedo earlier, and even now I'm not even full throttle, and it went up to 106 then. So yeah, very impressed. Speak to you later. Like a lot of 125s these days, this has also got uh, automatic start-stop on it, which saves a bit of fuel. to keep with the Euro regs. It also comes with keyless ignition and if you're familiar with the Yamaha R system of keyless ignitions like on the long term X-Max we've got at the minute um, then you'll recognise the way this one works. Slightly different looking switch gear uh, for the ignition switch but it works just as well as the X-Max one nice and easy you don't need a um, manual to work it out head up into the mountains shortly so I shall look forward to a little bit of a ride there. Right, I'm gonna go and try and catch these leaders now. So we're 109 on the clock, that's kilometers of course. 110, that's when we head down a bit, 111. If anyone says you can't have fun on 125s, then they need to ride them properly. A day like this in the mountains above Spain, well above uh, Barcelona. Don't matter what you're on, it's fantastic. Great ride. up in front there with the Alpine Stars jacket, his ex BSB rider and usually rides fast bikes which is what he's here for and until he started to enjoy this uh, scooter he was a bit unsure what to expect really from 125 scooter but I reckon he's enjoying himself 
brakes are really good, not plenty of feel to them. Handles well, fast out the corners. I've not found anything so far that I don't like on this scooter. As one, two, fives go, it's fantastic. Very, very impressed. The engine's really strong for not a lot of horsepower, really. It's like a roller coaster. This got a bit of everything: uphill, downhill, tight bends, off camber bends, off camber downhill, uphill. I'm not sure how much of it you'll. Uh, be able to take it on the video but it's proper good fun and when the roads are like this you don't need much more than a 125 for 2025 this scooter's also got um, traction control and ABS to both wheels this is probably a good thing today. Certainly using the brakes and suspension and everything. Also the suspension's got 5mm more travel than the uh, previous model. And it's also easy to adjust the twin rear shocks. I've just got a hand adjustable um, preload which you can just do at the side of the road or whatever if, you know, if you're feeling like you need to soften or harden the suspension it's simple to do without a tool which is a good move really the front forks have also been uh, changed a bit the uh, oil's been changed for something different and they've been stiffened a little I've got to say the suspension is really good. I don't even know what's setting this on, we just jumped on it this morning, but uh, no, no complaints here, I wouldn't really want to change it. We've got a new dash as well this year. On this version, you just get the uh, LCD uh, display, which is, it's alright, it's nothing too special, but the Tech, Tech Max version, which isn't available yet, it's going to be about May, I think. Um, gets full TFT screen with Garmin navigation. The Garmin's uh, free as well, which is a good thing. And the screen does look uh, very modern. I saw a couple in the uh, hotel last night, but not got any that can ride, unfortunately. The Tech Max should sell very well. Normal Tech Max uh, upgrades like the leather look seat with the fancy stitching, Tech Max graphics. Um, oh, I just want me ABS cut in then, first time. Um, ooh, yeah, Tech Max graphics, slightly different colouring on some of the plastics. And there are also loads and loads of extras. I think it's sort of like 50 or 60 odd. Plus, you can uh, choose to have different packs like Comfort, Winter, etc. So, you can all add them on if you want to. And, interesting thing this year is the standard version of the N Max is cheaper than it was last year, despite having significant upgrades so there's a chance of finding some bargains in dealers on the outgoing 2024 model the kind of uh, buyer who likes the latest then just don't fire till January February and this one will be in the dealers and you should be able to order one now I would have thought and I'm not going to be disappointed It's a number one selling 125 in the UK for a reason. Certainly, uh, with the upgrades, fits well. Well, fits well in the Yamaha sports category of scooters. You can see the dash here, and um, got a menu button here. I'm 
the left hand thumb with various functions for odometers, distance, um, fuel used, etc., average fuel consumption, battery condition, which is more sort of stuff. Another thing this year, the, indic the indicators have been integrated into the front and rear um, light clusters. So, tires are back and front end up, looks neat, and they work very well. Sometimes you think if they're going to be integrated, you might not see the indicators as well, but um, moving them a bit higher up at the front certainly helps car drivers see them. And they look cooler as well, a bit less cluttered. Uh, it's also got projector beam headlight, high and low beam on two separate um, lights, which is uh, right in the centre of the scooter. Not had a chance to try it at night, but um, should be quite decent, I would have thought. Also got start stop there, you can see it, uh, that's it, we're off again. Starts instantly silent, pretty silent. Had a fantastic ride up into the mountains above Barcelona. Um, really was pushing on quite well on the scoots. Had a good laugh. Nobody got killed, so that's always good. And now we're back into the city. And I must say, it's probably the most impressive 125 I've ridden in a long, long time. When four strokes first started taking over from two stroke, everything was really flat in comparison. Uh, it just wasn't the same, but I think improvements in technology, the way they make the power, has started to make a 125 fun again. And we rode the air cooled Yamaha Razor 125 earlier this year, which has got a bit of a boost function on it as you accelerate and quite a good engine for an air-cooled engine and this is another level really from that it's a liquid-cooled engine which always makes more power than an air-cooled and it's just got the torque to accelerate really happy enough it's happy enough to be sat on the motorway you don't feel like you're slow it's, well you're not slow but it's equally just as good around town Really agile, light. Brakes are fantastic. Suspension's good. The improvements they made to them has been well worthwhile. Now a lot of people that uh, use the N Max, oh, funky bridge. Um, yeah, a lot of people that use the N Max use it for deliveries, the fleet riders or whatever, delivering pizzas, that sort of thing. So. During the presentation last night, they were saying that um, quite a few delivery riders are doing 3,000 kilometres a week on these. So, with that sort of mileage, you're going to be ready for a new scooter every year or so, really. And the good thing about buying a brand new scooter is that they're 100% tax deductible. So, if you're self employed, it makes sense to get one whenever you can afford it, really. Um, if you're an ordinary commuter, youngster, or somebody that's just in the market for a 125, then I'd certainly recommend the NMAX 125. And this is probably the most fun ride I've had this year. I've done quite a few scooters this year, so. Always with Scooter Lab, there's also a written test to accompany this video. So head over to the link that will pop up on your screen in a minute and then have a read. If you like the video, subscribe, comment. If you're a current NMAX owner, let us know what you think of the new model. Will you be trading up? If you're not a scooter owner yet, are you thinking of buying one? Would you buy the NMAX? Let us know, it's always good to have your comments. So, bye for now.
Yeah, it's not that silly, but it is, eh? Thank you. Yeah, it's not a bad track. <laughs> Probably a chance to